Canada is the second largest country in the world by area. Despite this, Canada is ranked 37th in the world in terms of population. And when we boil it down even further, the vast majority of Canadians live very close to the United States border. In particular, Canada's Golden Horseshoe is home to approximately one out of every four Canadians. Here's why. Welcome to Geography by Jeff. Have you ever noticed just how large Canada is? It's a truly huge country. Despite this, most Canadians don't actually live all that far north. Today, we're going to explore a particular part of Canada that's been dubbed the Golden Horseshoe. But first, if you enjoy my channel, be sure to check out my podcast that covers many of the same geographic topics you love. Each week, me and geography professor Hunter Shobi bring you a fun geography-filled episode. So if you love nerding out over geography, this is the podcast for you. And you can listen right here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Before we talk about the Golden Horseshoe specifically, we should first talk about Canada more broadly. Canada is a really large country in terms of area. It's almost inconceivably large. But while Canada is a huge country, the vast majority of its people live within 100 miles of the border with the United States. There's an interesting geographic story for why this is, and we'll get to that in a future episode. But for now, it's largely because of just how inhospitable Canada is once you get even a little farther north. And it's because of this same issue that we see early Canadian settlers begin to identify the Golden Horseshoe as one of the few areas at the time that was not only accessible, but actually livable. In fact, we can go back even further than the early British Canadian settlers to see that even the indigenous peoples found the area to be highly valuable. The Iroquois established two villages on what would later be the city of Toronto followed by the Mississauga tribe in the early 1700s. All that's to say, there's always been something special about this particular area. But the first large influx of European settlers to the area did not come directly from Britain, France, or even British Canada. They came from the original 13 colonies of the United States. You see, during the American Revolutionary War, people who were loyal to the crown fled the 13 colonies for areas that were still controlled by Britain, of which Canada was the nearest one. And the royalty of Great Britain at the time granted those same settlers land within this area in part to compensate them for their losses in the 13 colonies. But while these settlers started the first movement towards inhabiting the area we today call the Golden Horseshoe, it wasn't for another 25 years that any serious form of settlement began. In 1793, the town of York was established within the area, which would later become the capital of the region known as Upper Canada. This would be the very same York that was plundered and destroyed by American troops during the War of 1812. Once free, the local Canadians at the time began to rebuild the town of York, and also opted to change its name to something more in line with the indigenous tribes, Toronto. From there, the region began to grow rapidly. For the remainder of the 19th century, the Greater Toronto Region welcomed immigrants from many European countries, including many Irish refugees fleeing the Irish famine. At the beginning of the 1800s, the general area of Toronto had fewer than 10,000 people living in it. By 1901, however, Nearly 240,000 people lived within the city of Toronto alone. The Golden Horseshoe today is largely comprised of the cities of Toronto and Hamilton, the regions of York, Peel, Niagara, Halton, Durham, and Waterloo, and many smaller cities and regions. It is truly an eclectic and diverse area that today is home to over a quarter of all Canadians in the country. And while there's been historic reasons for the original movements to this area, there are reasons why so many people live and move to the Golden Horseshoe today. Canada has many livable areas and regions. The metro areas of Vancouver and Montreal, for example, are home to millions of Canadians. But neither of those metro areas has ever been able to reach the heights that the Golden Horseshoe has. But before we get into why exactly the Golden Horseshoe has so many Canadians, if you're enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. More fun geography videos are just a single click away. The reason so many people live in the Golden Horseshoe today is basically stated within the name itself. The entire area is blessed with many benefits that enable a vast quantity of people to live and work there. The word golden was specifically used when the area was first described in 1954 because there was so much prosperity occurring within this particular region of Canada. The first and probably most obvious reason for why this region has grown so much is due to the sheer amount of water available. The Golden Horseshoe lies within the heart of the Great Lakes region. It exists right in between Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and Lake Huron. This makes the Golden Horseshoe the region with the most amount of people with direct access to the most amount of fresh water over anywhere else in the world. Mega cities and regions are not uncommon, but few have such an enviable source of fresh water so readily available. 
But while fresh water is very important, another thing is needed to ensure the continued growth of any region, agriculture. Luckily for the early settlers, this area of Canada is one of the very few with Luvasol soil, which is classified by the Food and Agriculture Organization as a soil with high amounts of nutrients with good drainage. This makes it particularly well suited for farming and growing crops. Today, the area is home to over 2 million acres of protected habitat and farmland, dubbed the Green Belt. And within the Green Belt, over 200 different farming commodities are grown, including a fairly robust wine region. And all of this is enabled by a surprisingly mild climate. For Canada, according to the Koppen method of determining climate across geography, the Golden Horseshoe region has a climate that has cold winters, but relatively warm summers. This means that, between April and October, the region is quite comfortable for those living there. They just have to survive an otherwise pretty frosty winter. Finally, the Golden Horseshoe also happens to be right in between two major regions of the United States, which lends itself to a lot of economic benefits. You see, Canada's largest trading partner in the world is the United States. Over 75% of all Canadian goods are exported to the US, with this region being directly connected to New York City by way of Buffalo and Chicago by way of Detroit, it enabled an economic generation that other regions of Canada simply don't have. All of this has combined to create the very unique and very wealthy region of the Golden Horseshoe. The Golden Horseshoe today is anchored by Canada's largest city, Toronto, with about 2.8 million people, and the city of Hamilton with about 600,000 people. This is followed by the Peel region, which has about 1.4 million people, and the York region with about 1.2 million people. And bringing up the rear are Durham, Halton, and Niagara regions with 700,000, 600,000, and 475,000 people, respectively. If you're doing your math correctly, this adds up to about 7.8 million people. These regions and cities are what make up the original Golden Horseshoe. Since 2004, however, the Golden Horseshoe has been extended to additional areas nearby as development has grown. These extended areas include the counties of Brant, Dufferin, Haldimand, Norfolk, Northumberland, Petersborough, Simcoe, and Wellington, as well as the Waterloo region and Kawartha Lakes, bringing the total population of the Greater Golden Horseshoe to 9.8 million people. This would equate to 26% of all Canadians living within an area about one-tenth of 1% 1 of all of Canada's land. That's an incredible statistic that few other countries have. And not only is this the most dominant region in terms of population, but it's also the most dominant economically. The Toronto Stock Exchange is the third largest stock exchange in North America, behind the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, and the 11th largest in the world. The economy of Toronto alone is absolutely dominant within the country, providing roughly 20% of Canada's entire GDP. This is largely due to Toronto being a hub for key markets such as finance, technology, and entertainment. All of this is to say, the Golden Horseshoe easily makes up Canada's most important region by a wide margin. Vancouver, Montreal, Calgary, Edmonton, and many other Canadian cities and regions are very important to Canada overall. But no other region is as dominant or domestically important as the Golden Horseshoe. A confluence of geographic factors has led to this area being within one of the Earth's few golden regions, much to Toronto's great benefit. I hope you enjoyed learning about Canada's Golden Horseshoe. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to watch more of my videos, you can do so here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.